What's up guys, Billy here, and today I wanted to discuss a topic that has been gaining more and more traction over the past few weeks, and that is drone hacking or drone jailbreaking. It works almost like an iPhone jailbreak if you're familiar with that. Now before I start, I just want to say I'm really not a fan of this. I'll go over most of the stuff that you have to know about drone hacking, uh, but I just wanted to establish my stance before I get started and before you left your comments. I first caught wind of this through email from what must have been a viewer. He sent an email to me and a bunch of other people about how he joined the Mile High Club with his Mavic, which is 5,600, 5,400 feet, it's something like that. But basically, it's crazy high. It's higher than the software will let you. So this is an email I would have just skipped over. Honestly, I really wouldn't have paid much attention to it. But I was intrigued. I clicked on it, and I watched the video. And sure enough, he was well over 5,000 feet. I think he went up to around 5,600 feet, which is absolutely absurd. I don't want to single anyone out, so I'm not going to give away his personal information because I have seen a lot of YouTube videos and discussions on forums about this topic. So again, it's not just him. There are a lot of people out there who are experimenting with this hacked software. After doing some research on what these hacks actually do, I've become fairly familiar with them. Basically, all of the altitude restrictions, the speed limits, and the no-fly zones that DJI has pretty much implemented in their software get thrown out the window once you download the hacked version of the firmware for the Mavic. Now, within the DJI GO application, there is some leeway with these restrictions. So, for example, the altitude limit, which is 120 meters or 400 feet, that basically comes standard 120 meters, but you can bump that up to 500 meters, which turns out to be 1,640 feet. Now, that's nowhere close to 5,600 feet, but again, it does give you some sort of leeway in case you need to go a little bit higher than 400 feet. Also, as far as the no-fly zones are concerned, those are somewhat of a suggestion by DJI. All you need to do is put in some personal information and bear responsibility uh, that saying basically if you're flying in this area, you're not going to cause any accidents and if you do cause an accident, you're responsible, blah blah blah. That's called an unlock certification or an unlock token. You guys can go through the software and find that. But again, within this application, there is a lot of leeway, so I really don't see why people have to go out there and download a hacked version of the software just so they can fly their Mavic wherever they want. Now it's time for a little history lesson. This all started back with CopterSafe, a Russian company, who came out with the cracked version of the Mavic Pro firmware. They were selling it for $200 to the public. Seems a little bit steep to me for Mavic Pro hacked firmware, uh, but again, $200. Now since then, hackers have gotten a hold of the files, they've made it free and available to the public so you can go ahead and get this for free on your Mavic Pro. I wouldn't advise it. Uh, if you guys want to know how to actually get the software on your Mavic, I'm not going to show you guys in this video because again, I don't really stand by it. I think it's kind of dumb, uh, but I'll include a link, like a video down below and it kind of goes through the steps. There's no sound whatsoever and honestly, it's kind of over my head what he was doing on the computer. Uh, so again, if you guys want to check that out, link in the description. DJI is of course already aware of the hacked Mavic Pro firmware out there and they're encouraging everybody and really urging everybody not to install this on their Mavic. And really that has to go without saying for I guess someone like me. I really wouldn't take any chances with this. You have no idea what someone could have done with that code. They could have messed with the return to home settings. They could have messed with the actual flight. I mean just anything could have been messed with in that code and all you're doing is basically risking your $1,000 drone, I guess depending on which version you bought, your $1,000 drone just because you want to be able to fly as fast as you can, as high as you can, and basically anywhere that you want. So again, I'm not taking any chances. Now that most of the information is out of the way, it's time to dive deeper into this discussion. Basically, there are three different groups of people in the drone community that I've come up with. Again, I've come up with these three different groups. So first of all, there are people out there who know about the DJ limitations and they're cool with them. It's like, all right, I can't fly over 400 feet, done, I won't fly over 400 feet. And that's cool, right? Those are, I guess, the more responsible ones. Now on the other side of the spectrum, there are people out there who are basically saying, tell DJI, I paid you my money, give me the drone and let me fly it however I want. Now the people that are in the middle, this is the third group, they're the ones who are saying, you know, I know I have to follow these rules, I can't fly over 400 feet, but why does DJI have to limit us? Like, they hate the limitations, but they know that they can't fly like a jackass. I'm happy to say that I think most people are cool with the limitations, and for those of you guys who are in the middle and hate the limitations, there is, again, that leeway within the software that allows you to change the maximum flight altitude and also fly basically wherever you want as long as you bear responsibility and put in that unlock NFZ application or token or certification, whatever you want to call it. 
After reading a little bit more in this article, it appears that the people who came out with the hack or the cracked version of the Mavic Pro firmware never intended it to be misused, but honestly, how can you come out with a software or, you know, a hacked version of something and not intended to be misused? Obviously, if you give people the option to fly as high as they want, as far as they want, wherever they want, they are going to come up with some sort of way to misuse your hacked software. And I read a quote and like some guy got really upset that someone was flying near an airport and he said, I hope it wasn't you, one of you misusing my mods. So again, to that guy, if you come out with hacked software, I really don't see how you're not going to expect people to misuse it. So that's basically all that I have to say about this topic. Again, I'm really not for hacked drone software, and I hope that DJI can put a stop to it in the near future, as it only takes one person to ruin it for us all. We're in such a weird area with drones right now, it's sort of this huge gray area. A lot of people are wondering, do I get my drone registered still? Do I not have to register my drone? Something I've been wondering is about the Part 107, is that even going to be a thing in a couple of years? That's kind of why I'm holding off on it, just to see, you know, this whole registration went downhill, maybe the Part 107 will go downhill. So again, I'm stepping back and I'm waiting. I really do think that drones will be the way of the future in certain industries, keep in mind. Uh, for example, package delivery, food delivery, photo, video, surveying. I mean, really, these things are going to pave the way in certain industries and can be really beneficial. It's just up to the governments of basically every single country. I'm, pers I'm specifically talking about the United States just to make fair regulations for pilots as well as everyday people to make sure that they're safe. But again, pilots also have the freedom that they deserve to fly the drones that they bought. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know your stance on hacked drone software because, of course, it's not only my opinion that matters, and I do love hearing from every single one of you. But, guys, as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.